Hey friends, on a recent episode, we talked about desktop tools for developing with Azure Cosmos DB, but did you know that you can also use Azure SQL Database completely offline in a container using your favorite client OS, and it really simplifies your developer experience. I'm gonna chat with Drew, and he's gonna teach me all about it today on Azure Friday. Hey friends, I'm Scott Hansman, and it's Azure Friday. I'm here with Drew squires Kabala. We're gonna talk about Azure SQL DB offline. So Azure SQL Database, it's it's Azure, it's Azure, but it's SQL. It's a SQL Server in the cloud. I mean, I can run SQL Server if I wanted to. I could just bring up a VM and run it, but then I'd have to care about it and feed it and deal with it. This is a fully managed database, right? Yeah, and with Azure SQL Database, you have serverless tiers, so you're paying for the CPU time that you need and not for what you don't need. There's a lot of great features that make Azure SQL Database a nice choice for developers. Yeah, and it scales from basically free, serverless, nothing, all the way up to 100 terabytes. I mean, it's not your grandmother's Azure. It's not your grandmother's SQL Server, the one that I grew up on so very long ago. Yeah. So what I'd like to talk about a little bit today is while Azure SQL Database in the cloud is a fantastic service, as a developer, a lot of times I want to build an application locally mm -hmm. and for that, we have the Azure SQL Database Emulator. Okay, well, hang on. Azure SQL Database Emulator. As I mentioned, I've been thinking about this for a long time, and I've used SQL. Isn't that just running SQL Server locally or getting SQL Server Express, which we would have run many years ago? It's a little bit different in that for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, we've taken that and put it into containers. So instead of for local development, um, by installing SQL Server, the full thing. In, in this case, you're able to use a container runtime and deploy your container. That is very convenient. Okay, so I can bring this up for integration test and then tear it down. There's no overhead. It's not running always in the background. It's running whenever I feel like it. And mm -hmm. if it's in a container, I assume that means I can run it on a Mac or on Linux or wherever I want to run it. Yeah. And you know, the screen looks pretty familiar because it's VS Code and it's integrated with these really great developer tools. Oh, okay. So you're going to be able to do this demo and discuss this basically well without leaving the VS Code that I'm already living in. Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to kind of focus on our application code as we build, deploy, and test our SQL database. That is a very interesting and very different kind of use case and use you know, model um, for, for running something like this. That's going to be interesting. It seems like it's going to be more agile. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So right. I, I've, I've built just um, some, a sample Azure function. So in my functions folder, I've got this cars C sharp file. Um, the, the sample is two functions. One of them is giving us a list of cars by running a, a select star statement on a database we haven't built yet. And the other function is adding a car to this cars table that we haven't created yet. And so there are these two, two functions that I, I, I've started, but I want to be able to test them before I start deploying. The so I'm realizing actually you're using Azure Functions, which has its own offline emulator. So you're really in airplane mode at this point if you want it to be. Yeah, I mean, I, if I lost internet connection, I could keep doing this demo, but unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to talk to you about it. All right, that's pretty cool. Okay, that's, that, that right there already is pretty cool. Yeah, so I've got this car class that goes with the, the Azure functions. I've created it to store the attributes like the make, the model, the year, and the color of the, uh, of the car. But if I want to create the, the table and test it where I'm going to store these cars, I'm going to use what's called a SQL project. Now, this is an extension for VS Code. If you grab the MS SQL extension, it's going to give you all these capabilities, including the integration right into the Azure SQL Database Emulator. So if I create an in Azure VS Code, Code, though, right, mm -hmm. isn't there also an Azure Studio that's based on VS Code? Is that going to come into play anywhere here? We can hop over into it if we need to. Oh. And there use the very similar database projects if we wanted to. So I if see. I wanted richer um, graphical interfaces, maybe a table designer, I could use Azure Data Studio. But we can also stay focused on our code and stay in VS Code if we want to. Very cool. All righty. 
I'm gonna call my uh, my database project cars demo, and then I'm gonna put it right next to my functions in a SQL folder. Okay, and you made this a Azure SQL database project type. You didn't say local or emulator. You just right. Okay. Yeah, I, I could I could select like an Azure SQL database project. I could do a SQL Server project with some similar capabilities if I wanted to develop for a SQL Server. The other thing I'm going to do is use these SDK style SQL projects. This is in preview right now, and it, it simplifies the source control processes for my SQL projects. And what we've got is this the SQL project now in VS Code. And we see it starting to light up in File Explorer as well as Source Control. And I can go ahead and create that table for cars. And it's going to give me this uh, kind of template. But I've just grabbed the, the class definition that I created earlier just to kind of reference mm -hmm. while I build the, the table out. And I'll bet you Copilot's gonna pick up on a few things here. Let's see. So at oh, some my. point, Copilot figures out, just figured out what you were doing. Did it do it from what was above? It did. So it saw what I had dropped in there and commented. I'm gonna make my own adjustment and just say, I don't need huge columns. I only need a hundred characters. Part that of is a very, by the way, I just want to point out that that's a very clever thing I had not thought about yet. By bringing that comment in, you basically brought in some metadata slash context, giving it a hint of what you were going to do. And then by the third time that you had entered in a column, it was like, oh, I see where Drew's going. Yeah. And I can even pick up that, hey, maybe I need a primary key. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. Okay. But part, of, part of SQL projects is that it validates your database model. So I'm creating this Azure SQL database locally. And if I do a build on my SQL project, it's going to make sure that the database project matches the capabilities of Azure SQL database. Interesting. Okay. So what is a build in this context then? Like you're building, it's a, it's an SDK style project. You're building what, what is doing the build? What's the make in this context? So it's a .NET process. And what it compiles to is a database artifact called a mm. DAC pack. Yeah. And this has the whole database schema in it. So this is the file that I need if I wanted to store a pipeline artifact or um, ship it off to other SQL servers. What the next step is and what uses that DAC pack is a publish process. And Again, we're at the point with our Azure functions here where we want to test them. And I can use the Azure functions local runtime. And for databases, when I publish, I've got the option to wow. use a database emulator. So Interesting. I okay. Yeah. But I noticed, though, that you mentioned at the beginning that there is different versions of Azure SQL. Um, I don't remember you specifying anything about a version. So you're just kind of on the tail right now. You're on latest. Or is, do I need to think about versioning much and with the context of versioning? Uh, features that I might want to use or not use? You won't need to worry about uh, versioning of features. Azure SQL database specifically is going to always be on the, the, the latest version. Within SQL Server, you could specify, do I want to use 2019? Do I want to use 2022? You can specify those different versions. OK, cool. So here's our default port number. Mm -hmm. I can give it a. Just kind of a, a dummy password for local use. And then I'll grab the light version of the emulator since this is a more uh, simple schema that we've been building. And those are two different container uh, bases, I assume. What, mm -hmm. What's the difference between light and full? And why would I pick one over the other? Between light and full, the full version is a container that comes from the SQL server based container image that then has some modifications made to it. The light version comes from the Azure SQL Edge container image, which has um, not only a much smaller footprint size in terms of 
the actual uh, image that's pulled from the container repository, but it also has compatibility to ARM64. So if I'm running on an ARM64 computer, then I would definitely want to use that edge option. That's cool. So that means that I could use that on the new uh, ARM-based Windows dev kit or maybe even a Raspberry Pi if I've got a beefy one. Absolutely. As long as it's 64 bits. So some of the more recent Raspberry Pis, you can run it uh, with Azure SQL Edge. Fun. So I popped through with the defaults on a few things and I can kind of go hands off here um, mm -hmm. as the emulator sets itself up. Interesting. Okay. So we're using Docker here. This is, this is running on SQL Server under Linux, which is, uh, you know, a, a somewhat recent last, I think, five years uh, mm -hmm. thing, but it's still SQL Server. It is still SQL Server. It's going to be the T-SQL syntax that's um, available. So JSON functions, XML functions, all those really cool things about SQL, Azure SQL database are available in this container. Mm -hmm. And does it, do it really, does it matter? Like it's SQL server and it listens on a port and it does what I ask it to do. So I don't really mind or care whether I'm on windows, Mac, uh, I am talking to this service, which is SQL. And then when I put it into Azure, I'll be talking to Azure SQL. So there isn't really a concern that it's windows or Linux, is there? Right. That is exactly it. Take it. Okay. And then I can see that you're spinning up a new one here. So then I could even use this in unit tests, right? I could spin up a SQL server, create a database in the unit test, do a bunch of testing and then tear it down. There's no cost other than the spinning up or tearing down of a container. Right. Yeah. This is, this is local on my computer. It's a container running here. Mm -hmm. um, I can, I can pop into the functions and I've already got my connection string in there for local host. Hmm. Um, let me double check that I've got the database name right. Now, in some instances, I have uh, you know run SQL Express or SQL Server locally. Uh, I could certainly move to this if it met my uh, my development needs, couldn't I? Absolutely. This is a really nice option for basically a lot of local developer uh, workflows. Mm -hmm. Wow, there it is. So I can connect to it in Object Explorer, but with the Azure Functions local runtime, if I set my app settings for that here, that's just mm -hmm. my local host, SA, and then that dummy password that I set earlier, I can do the whole hit F5, have the debugger attach, and my Azure Functions are going to launch here. Okay, so I see that we've gone and built out our Azure Friday function and the Azure Functions core tools or the Azure Functions runtime, which is itself a, you know, a container runtime. Mm -hmm. uh, it can spin up here. And then that's going to just talk to localhost. And you're not having to worry about um, exposing any ports from Docker. The emulator is taking care of that work for us. Right. Yeah, it, it, it gave us the default for 1433, and it, Docker has already exposed that port through. So we're, we are all set. Okay. I can, I can even um, pull up some HTTP requests here real quick and say, "Hey, I want to check that GET port and see. Yep, I'm getting a response there. There's nothing in the database yet." This is just a lovely demo. And by the way, I think that indirectly, it's also nice that you're doing all of this in Visual Studio Code, even doing your HTTP GET right there which isn't related directly to this demo, but you're doing all this work within one code environment. Uh, I'm not seeing you alt tab or run around from place to place. So you're, you're really home here and everything that you need is available to you. Yeah, and I, I know that I've used Azure Functions and the Azure Function local runtime and C-sharp functions, but for developers, VS Code is home a lot of times and being able to tie into whatever your application stack is or whatever your choice of language is for Azure Functions, if that's where you're headed, is. But then to also use Azure SQL Database also locally is a really nice place to be. Yeah, it makes that inner loop very tight. And certainly since this is all command line and container based things, I could run this from the command line if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and spin these things up and down. It's just that I've got that nice tooling via these extensions that's making my life a little bit easier here yeah. within the VS Code. So if I go ahead and send a post request to make sure that I can insert to the table, it generated that GUID for me. It added that car to the list, and I'll just 
double check that it's returning it back and there's that nice little array. If you're comfortable with SQL queries and using SQL tools, whether it's the MS SQL extension or um, Azure Data Studio, SSMS, um, you can interact with the Azure SQL uh, database emulator. So I can navigate through Object Explorer and say, hey, tell me what are the top 100 rows? And it's going to give us the results right there. So this is a database. Wow. And it is full SQL Server, like you mentioned before. Uh, whether you picked light or full, it's going to have you know all the things that you expect, even from versions of SQL Server that are somewhat old, like XML data types, as well as some of the newer features and geographic data types and things like that as well. Exactly. Interesting. Now you've integrated this nicely into your kind of inner loop, but often inner loops include, uh, you know, CI, CD and things like that. Yeah. And kind of the bridge between CI, CD and that local development is a lot of times source control. So a lot of people, the ability to have your schema in source control through SQL projects is, is a huge benefit. So I, I can go ahead and see, hey, my, check my table in. I can check my SQL project file in. So I'm going I'm to go ahead and commit these changes real quick. But before I check that in, what I want to do is I want to take a look at my pipeline. Mm -hmm. Because one of the benefits to SQL projects is how much they simplify the deployment of my database. I have the Azure functions connected to a GitHub repository through the deployment center in the Azure portal. So I've been able to connect it to my Azure Friday repository. And that's what we see in this workflow is that it uses the Azure functions action to deploy the functions. Okay. But I also... How are you deploying it to the to data? Like I understand how a function gets deployed because it has an action for it. How would you deploy to the Azure SQL database? So we've got, when you create an Azure SQL database, you've got the connection strings for it. Right. And I can use the Azure SQL action. Ah. So if I... Oh, that's easy. Okay. Yeah. Intuitive. And the things that this is going to need are my connection string, the path to the SQL project, and then I'll tell it I want you to do the action publish. So we'll come back to the connection string, the path. I'm going to copy my relative path is SQL cars demo oh, and then that SQL proj. Okay, the path to the SQL proj file that mm -hmm. contains all the information it needs. It would be kind of similar to if you wanted a path to build a CS proj and then the publish action. We're familiar with putting secrets in the GitHub secrets potentially. Mm -hmm. The connection string for this Azure SQL database I have put in an Azure SQL secret. And so we will use that in our pipeline. And this is the setup that it takes to be able to deploy our database. Wow, that's actually pretty simple. Yeah. It's, it's nice. And this could be a Windows pipeline or a Linux pipeline. This will work on both. So you just check this in, it'll kick it off right now. Yep. So and do that. Kick those changes out. And if you want to learn more about that Azure SQL action, there's a repository with a bunch of examples. Mm -hmm. So whether you're doing your SQL proj or SQL scripts, it'll work for both of those. But, Jump over to actions and see it spinning. There it is. Look yeah. at that. So we've built some Azure functions, added a database, tested it all locally, decided we were good with what we've built so far and want to go ahead and deploy it onto Azure, made the update to the pipeline and kicked it off and we're all set to go.
Just, that is very cool. I did not know that Azure SQL database can be used completely offline. Simplifies the development experience. Very nice. And then you streamed it right up to CI, CD and into the cloud. Uh, you did it all on an airplane and you landed and you just pushed to production. I love it. That's very cool. All right. I am learning all about Azure SQL databases and the Azure SQL DB emulator today on Azure Friday. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Azure Friday. Now I need you to like it, comment on it, tell your friends, retweet it, watch more Azure Friday.